in this video I'm going to be going through how to carry out hit lag. As you can see from the preview, hit lag is a period of time where both the attacking player and the target are frozen in place after an attack connects. And so with that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the series and join the Patreon where there's access to the scripts and files of the video. And so without further ado, let's continue into the tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to our Fox script and we're going to implement a new group of variables and it's going to look something like this. Temporary variables with four variables, hit pause, hit pause duration, temporary position and temporary velocity. Alright, so moving on from here, what we're going to do is scroll all the way down to maybe above where all the tilt attacks are, we're going to add in a new function. The name of this function is called hit underscore pause with delta being its parameter. Hit pause is less than hit pause duration when the player's hitbox collides with the opponent. Temp underscore pause will be equal to the position the player was in when the attack connected. This means that line 141 will make the player stationary as hit pause is carried out. To make this condition false and make it the else statement, hit pause is incremented by 1 each frame until it is no longer less than hit pause duration. And so now that we've added our hit pause function, what we're going to do is go into our state machine and near where the state logic is near the top, what we're going to do is add a new line and we're going to paste that in as a new state logic function that's going to be carried out every frame. From here, another variable that we want to create is a variable that looks something like this. This variable is called the freeze frame variables and this freeze frame variable is going to incorporate some code that's going to be a part of the update frames function that we have. And so that code that's going to be a part of this update frames function that we have is going to look something like this. If freeze frames is more than zero, then freeze frames is going to be equal to freeze frames minus one and then we're going to clamp it. We can actually just make this one equal to floor delta times 60. We can also now change this frame to floor delta times 60. Floor delta times 60 is a more accurate way of getting our frame count to increase or decrease by one each frame, even whilst the game is in slow motion. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go into the Fox state machine up here. And then what we're going to do is scroll all the way down to the very bottom where all these functions are. So let me collapse this. And what we're going to do under this function is we're going to create a new function with some new variables and it's going to look something like this. So what we have done here is we have created some variables that are meant to mimic the variables that we already have in our Fox uh, script. So horizontal decay v decay, for example, is hdvd. The way this works is that as the player character collides with a hitbox, the hit freeze function is called from the hitbox scene. The hit freeze function has two parameters, duration and knockback. Pause will be equal to the value of Fox's position when they are attacked. The duration of the freeze frame is held by the parent dot freeze frame variable. Okay, so now from here, what we're going to do is scroll all the way to the top where all of our states are. And let's say above the hit stun state, we're going to add in a new state and we're going to call this hit freeze. So it's going to look something like this. Don't forget to save. And from here, what we're going to do is scroll all the way down to where our hit stun state is. If you want to find it, oh, there it is actually, I found it. So then what we're going to do is above the hit stun state, we're going to create a new state and it's going to look, it's going to be called something along the lines of states.hitfreeze. And it should look something like this. States.hitfreeze. The hit freeze state first checks if parent.freeze frame is equal to zero. If the condition is false, the character position is frozen with the values of pause as they've just been attacked. If parent of freeze frame does equal zero, the player retains their previous velocity hdk and vdk then switches to the hit stun state. Also, as for the animation of the hit freeze state, what I'm going to do is go all the way to the hit stun state and above the hit stun state, I'm going to add some code that looks something like this. States.hitfreeze is actually going to play the hit stun animation, but say hit freeze in the text so that whilst we are play testing it, we know that the hit freeze state is working. Okay, and so what we're now going to do is we're going to go into our hitbox scene and we're going to scroll all the way down to where our angle flipper is. And so if you want to, we can actually copy and paste this angle flipper function, like so. Probably hide this. I'm going to call this one maybe angle flipper version 2. You can also change the original angle flipper function if you want to, but I'm going to create a new one just for the sake of the video. 
and then from here what we're going to do is incorporate some new attributes to pass into this function these new attributes that are going to be passed into this function into this function is going to look like so body underscore velocity which is going to be a vector to body underscore position which is going to be a vector to as well h uh, decay horizontal decay equal e equaling zero and v decay equaling zero also and so now what we're going to do is for every mention of body dot velocity dot x we are going to change that with body underscore vel dot x every time you see body dot h decay we change that to h decay anytime we see body uh, dot position which should be somewhere here yeah body dot global position what we are going to do is change this simply to body underscore position and so what i'm going to do is speed through all of this and show you what that looks like and in fact before i do that i'm going to give you an example so for example you may have something like this where it says body dot global position we're just simply going to change that to body underscore position and then it's going to move on to the next error and then we copy and do the same thing and so i'm going to show you what that looks like once it's completed and so now this is what it looks like you have body underscore position body underscore position body, body underscore vel dot x body underscore vel dot y h decay and v decay and so i've repeated this throughout this whole function and i've kept the original intact if you want to do that okay and so now what we're going to do is instead of having this angle flipper function over here what we'll do what we're going to do is get rid of it and we're going to replace it with code that looks something like this and so what we're going to do is probably change this to angle flipper v2 since that's the name of the angle flipper that we have and what this is basically saying is that char state which is the state machine of the opponent that this hitbox has collided with char state dot state is going to be equal to char state dot state dot hit freeze in other words, if you go back to the Fox script and you want to change states from one state to another, you would say something like return state dot hits done, right? So what we're going to do is in hitbox, what we're saying is the state of the opponent is going to change into hits freeze and the opponent's hits freeze function is now going to have this as its first parameter and angle flip of v2 as its second parameter. So if you look back in the Fox script and you scroll all the way down in the state machine, you can see that hit freeze has two parameters, duration and knockback. Duration is going to be how long the freeze frames last for, and knockback is going to have a whole list of parameters that are going to be important for the hit freeze of the opponent. And so from here, the next four lines of code are actually going to remain the same. And so the only thing that's actually going to change here is that char state dot state is not no longer going to equal hit stun because what we've done is made it equal to hit freeze so we're going to get rid of this and what we're going to do is implement some new code that looks something like this so what we now have is globals.hits done and then we're going to put in some values in its parameters now you may be wondering we don't have a globals uh, you know what does globals mean i'm going to show you what that means in a sec we're moving on to line 58 59 and 60 these lines over here what we are doing is we are making our parent, the attacking player, we're making their hit pause duration equal to the duration of the hitbox minus the amount of frames that are left in the attack. So let's say the attack is, is meant to last for 15 frames, but we are currently on our 10th frame. What that would do is it would be 15 minus 10, which would be equal to 5. So now that's the duration for which our attacking character is going to be paused for and uh, our attacking character's temporary position is going to be equal to its current position and its temporary velocity is going to be equal to its current velocity so that once the pause has finished and the duration has been met on the attack our character will continue with it with its location and its velocity that it was moving at after the hit lag has been concluded as for globals what we're going to do is we're going to create a new script and we're going to call it globals.gd with a capital G. I've already created it. And so once you've created that, what you want to do is go to project settings and go to auto load. And so what you're going to do is locate where the globals.gd script is. I put the globals.gd script within a folder called auto load. So that's where it is. So you double click on it and then you want to enable the global variable. And so then what you want to do is go inside the 
globals.gd script and you can get rid of this this is something that I was just testing out but the main important thing you want to have here is we're going to create a new function called hitstone and hitstone is going to have two parameters it's going to have a parameter called mod and a parameter called duration if you look back at the hitbox script the first parameter which is mod is actually the hit lag of the attack so if you if i press if i hold control and click on it this is simply just the formula for how you calculate hit lag which is a formula added from part 9 of the tutorial series so what is this script doing over here what mod is doing is we are changing the time scale of the engine to mod divided by 100 so the hit stun for example could be something like 400 or i should say something along the lines of four four frames so what we're going to do is if the hit stun is equal to four frames then what we're going to do is divide that by 100 and make that equal to 0.04 that's how fast the game is now going to be running it's going to be running in slow motion and i just print the mod just so that i know for testing purposes whether or not it's working then what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause this code pause this function and i'm going to make i'm basically creating a timer that is outside the tree of the game engine and i'm making the the wait time on this timer equal to the duration of the hit lag if that makes sense so if the hit lag is meant to last for four frames and currently our engine is running at 0.04 percent of the game speed we are now creating a timer that's now been slowed down and so for us to actually create an, a timer that is accurate that will end at the right time of the hit lag duration we are we made the duration parameter equal to hit lag divided by 60 because there are uh, 60 seconds in a minute once you do that you get a certain value that the timer will last for and once this timer has concluded it will delete itself from the scene and the engine time scale will be equal to one again that is what this line of code does now as a quick touch up what we're going to do is go to the physics process and we're going to actually change the value let me fix this real quick actually make a mistake here we're going to change the value of the engine time scale here and just remove this line if you have this line enabled, what's going to happen here is during multi-hit attacks like Fox's down air, basically once the hitbox has despawned, it's going to make the engine timescale equal to 1 again, which is not necessarily what you want. But since I have a hit freeze mechanic now, I can get rid of this. This engine.timescale is relevant here because if let's say for some reason the character was the glitch let's say you are in the middle of an attack and then you get attacked for example the engine time scale will be equal to one again let's say in the case that two attacks collide at the same time with the opponent and so now what we want to do is change frames from plus or equal to one to if i go to the fork script and scroll down you want to make it floor delta times 60 like so and so now that we are done, what we're going to do is go to our test stage and add in our Fox character. And what we're going to do is duplicate that and then move him down here and then move the first one down here. When you do this, don't forget to make the ID for the first Fox one and then the second ID for the second Fox, whatever number you want it to be. I make it two since I have two inputs in my project settings input map. And then you can start the game. And now, as you can see, when our opponent is hit, they go into the hurt animation and then they pause for a second and our character freezes still whilst that's happening. So if I hit my character whilst, they, whilst, I'm, whilst I'm running at them like this, there's also a slight pause and it looks as though they have gotten hit. Same with the up tilt. And so that should be it for this video. In the next video, I'll go over how to add special attacks to your character. Attacks such as up special, forward special, even neutral special for Fox, which comes at the request of a subscriber during my last community post. And so with all that said, watch this one off video for more content. And so that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.